Hey everyone, today we are going to solve the readable equation square root x. Okay, first of all, let's implement brute force solution. So if x is less than 2, in the case, just return x. If not the case, we start from 2, let's say i. And we have to return the square root of x rounded down to the nearest integer. So condition should be while i multiply i. And uh, if this condition, this calculation is less than or equal x. In that case, we add plus 1 to i. And uh, after that, just return i minus 1. So when we don't meet this condition, so that means we've gone over x, right? So that's why we have to subtract 1 from current i. Yeah, we pass all test cases, but not efficient. So next, let's think about uh, another solution. Okay, first of all, let's understand the core concept of the solution. So original problem can be stated as like compute the square root of non-negative integer x and return only integer part, round it down. So for example, x equal 8. So that means square root of 8 should be like 2.828 something like that. So this result in 2. And uh, if x equals 9, so square root of 9 should be just 3, right? And uh, do you remember the condition of while loop in the previous like a brute force solution? So we multiply i twice and uh, less than or equal x. So this is uh, actually a big hint. So do you come up with a uh, core concept of the solution. We can reframe this question as find the largest integer m such that m squared is less than or equal to x. So this new formulation is very crucial. We have two key points to find the largest integer m. So first key point is such space is finite. So we know that the square root of x must lie between 0 and x. So in fact, if x is greater than or equal to, we can safely limit our search to the range like 1 to x divided 2, because x divided 2 squared will already exceed x. So we have a finite, well-bounded range to search. And the second key point is monotonicity. So um, as m is increased, m squared also increases, right? So this is a monotonicity. And uh, if m square is less than x, we need to try a larger m, right? On the other hand, if m square is greater than x, we try a smaller m, right? So for example, x equal 9. So in the case, current number is like 2. 2 multiply 2 is less than or equal 9. So that is true, right? So in the case, we try a, like a larger number, right? Like a 3 by 3. And then finally, we find the uh, uh, largest number, right? M. So if we meet this condition, so we increase current number from 2 to 3, and then find the largest number. This behavior is monotonic, meaning we can eliminate half of the search space at each step. So this is a perfect for binary search. So that's why I thought we can solve this question with binary search. Yeah, so that is a basic idea to solve this question. So let's jump into the code. Okay, let's write the code. First of all, if x is less than 2, in that case, just return x. If not the case, so left and right. So left will start from 1, and the right should be x divided 2. And then start binary search. While left is less than or equal right, in that case, First of all, calculate the middle number, mid equal left plus, la plus right divide 2. And then let's say square should be middle multiply middle. And if square equal x, in the case, return middle number, as if square is less than x in the case. So that is a small, right? So that's why we have to 
find uh, like a larger number. So search range should be like uh, towards right. So left equal mid plus one. If not the case, so that's the opposite. So right equal mid minus one, like uh, towards left. And then if we break this condition, so in the end, we should return right. I think if we return left, so that number will exceed x. So you can check if we want. Yeah, so let me submit it. Yeah, looks good. And the time complexity of this solution should be order of log x, and the space is O1. OK, so I have another solution. OK, look at this. When I look at the binary representation, I thought maybe I could solve it by checking only the right half of the bit. So I tried it out just out of curiosity. So let's think about 8. Since this is a square problem, we want to find the bit position corresponding to half number of bit. Because we will be squaring values, the method is simple. Count the number of bit from right up to left most one bit. So for example, one zero zero zero. So that means four right. One, two, three, four. This one is a, a left most position. So let's say one 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 zero one zero zero zero. So this is like one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is 10. Something like that. Next, since total number of bit might be odd, we start from like bit length plus 1 divided by 2 position, just to be safe. From there, we gradually set each bit to 1, starting from higher bit down to the lower ones. Each time we set a bit, we square the result. If square exceeds x, we reset that bit back to 0 and move to next lower bit. We repeat this process until we all relevant bit have been tested. Since this algorithm check from higher bit down, the moment the square result becomes less than or equal to x, we know we, we found the correct answer. This is a similar what I did in solution one. Remember how we return the value when square was less than or equal to x. So we return like a find the largest integer m such that m squared is less than or equal to x. OK, let's see how it works. So first of all, create a result variable initialized with 0. And x should be, let's say, 1, 0, 0, 0. So that is 8, right? So in this case, we start from length of bit is 4. And the plus 1 divided by 2 is 2, right? So we start from index 2 from right position. So we change the result. So like one at uh, zero, one, zero, zero. So um, in this case, we calculate like, so this is a four. So four multiplied by four is greater than X. So that means eight. So that is two, right? In the case, we reset current one to zero and move next. So by the way, how can we reset one to zero? Any idea? We use one of x or properties. So one of x or properties like zero, x or zero is zero. One, x or zero is one. Zero, x or one is one. One, x or one equals zero. And I look at this. When both bits are one at the same position, the result becomes zero. So we use this feature to reset uh, 1 to 0. And then we successfully reset 1 to 0 at index 2 position. So we move next. We change this 0 to 1. So in the case, result should be 2, right? So 2 multiplied by 2 is greater than 8. So that is true, right? In the case, we keep this one and then move next. So we change this 0 to 1. The one one is three, right? So in the case, three multiplied by three is greater than eight. So that is true, right? In the case, we reset this one to zero. So, and then we 
reach the end of bit. So our final result number should be 0, 0, 1, 0. So that is 2, right? So that's why uh, we should return 2 in this case. So that is a basic idea to solve this question. So let's jump into the code. OK, let's write the code. If x is less than 2, in the case, just return x. And if not the case, let's count the length of bit. So count equal 0 and temp equal x. And while temp is greater than 0, so in the case, count plus equal 1 and temp right shift equal 1. And then after that, less equal 0. And then for i in range and uh, count plus 1 divide 2 and minus 1 and minus 1. And then less and uh, we change current position to 1. So 1 and uh, left shift and i position. And then if less multiply less is greater than 0, not 0, uh, x. In, in that case, we reset current position to 0. So less and uh, x or equal and uh, 1 and the left shift and uh, current position. After that, just return less. Yeah, so let me submit it. Yeah, looks good. And the time complexity of this solution should be order of log x and the space is 01. Yeah, so that's all I have for you today. Please support me with the actions such as comment and hitting like button. I'll see you in the next question.